My research group works on nanostructures, and we are in particular interested in how electrons and photons behave in these small structures and interact with each other. Often we see unexpected effects that are, of course, uh, not only of great scientific interest, but they can also enable real-life practical applications. We spend a lot of time and effort on a particular class of nanostructures that are known as carbon nanotubes. These are very, very small structures, and they can be 100,000 times thinner than human hair. And they have unique properties, be it electrical, mechanical, optical, or thermal. And one can exploit these properties for a variety of applications. We are in a nanofabrication clean room, and we're going to be preparing a silicon wafer for carbon nanotube growth. We bring the wafer back into our lab, and we cut the wafer into small pieces. And we take these pieces and place them in a chemical vapor deposition system, which is a high temperature process for growing carbon nanotubes. Depending on different flow rate of the gas and composition of the gas, or the temperature, we can control the growth rate heat up the little substrate, break down the gases, and these broken down gases can get deposited to and grow nanostructures like carbon nanotubes. A grain of dust, a grain of floating dust, is hundreds, you know, thousands of times bigger than the structure that we are looking into. So to control the environment, we use systems like, for instance, this ultra-high vacuum system. If you focus a laser beam onto a nanotube forest, we can heat it and make it emit electrons. A phenomenon that we have recently discovered is that the nanotube forest can trap heat generated by the laser in a way that conventional metals can't. We are collaborating with physicists and we are looking into how the effect that Parham just described really works at the quantum mechanical level. Quantum mechanics becomes more and more apparent in smaller structures. Due to this, quantum mechanics is strongly present in nanostructures and is at the root of their surprising behavior. Carbon nanotubes in particular are a great vehicle to study quantum phenomena. My work is calculating the optical and electronic properties of carbon nanotubes. My colleague Salome who does theoretical and modeling work can predict which wavelength can be absorbed better by nanotubes. I can then try to experimentally measure how the different wavelengths are absorbed and compare the results with her predictions. This effect opens the door to a multitude of applications including new types of electronics, imaging systems, displays, even alternative energy generation systems and is a very good example of the unique properties of nanostructures. They're small, of course, but they have huge potential.